Hey, you may have heard of humanoids. That's possible. Everybody seems to be making a video on it, but I still want to share my opinion on this because why not? <laughs> this is big in comics. Now, I'm trying to be careful because uh, a little while ago, I promised myself, I actually promised my wife, that I would focus more on making videos criticizing the industry, companies, things like that, as opposed to point, pointing out individual people. Now, sometimes individual people deserve to be point out, pointed out. Sometimes it's newsworthy. Sometimes, you know, it's important. Um, I don't want to focus my time and energy focusing on mainly the, the two or three people that are uh, relevant to this, but I obviously want to make a video about it. So it's, it's important. So this is Kwanzer and Mark Wade, and they're going... <laughs> They're going for round two. I don't know what round this is actually, but this is what they're doing together. Humanoids. It's the first ever ongoing monthly comic books. Humanoids first ever ongoing comic books. Okay, so Humanoids is the, the company and they're starting to do monthly ongoing books. So we're going to jump into this. Uh, first, I wanted to let you know though that Downcast uh, is not a monthly ongoing comic book. It's something a little bit more special, more time put into it, uh, more care and love. And it's on Indiegogo right now. It's not going to be there forever. Um, but we've already reached $17,290 with 471 backers. This has already been amazing. And a lot of people are excited about it. If you haven't seen it yet, please check it out in the description below. Okay. Humanoids monthly books. Now monthly books have always been I don't know, like it's been a mainstay for comics for a really long time, really. Um, but monthly comic books have changed over time and not all books are made to be monthly comic books. They don't all work that way, which is why, for instance, Marvel will turn an ongoing series into a mini series and then just relaunch a new supposed mini series or they'll relaunch the same ongoing monthly book several times even in one year and that is because people just aren't buying it like the the sales don't support monthly books but that's not going to stop anyone here and don't get me wrong like if you want to try and do a monthly book and this is your your dream and you think it's financially viable go for it i have a hard time believing that this is going to be financially viable but it's going to be woke that's for sure they've got a free comic book day issue they've got several others and I know your boy Zach did a video on this uh, before and so you know Mags is involved making a video Kwanzaa uh, yeah, and Mark Wade and and there's even the one called Meyer that was really really funny <laughs> when uh, your boy went over that Meyer because spoiler alert his name is Richard Meyer and uh, that you know it, it, it is really funny actually that they have a book just titled Meyer h1 press i looked at this a bit again i don't want to delve too much into it but it was really funny this interview with kwanzer uh in new york comic-con he talked a little bit about it and the interviewer asked him who the artist is going to be on the book that he's writing with mark wade in a co-writer situation mind you and he didn't remember who the artist was going to be now, maybe being on TV is stressful, even when it's, you know, some really small YouTube channel. <laughs> um, or maybe the creative process is just so far removed from you. That could be another thing. I will tell you, co-writing is hell. I don't know who would want to co-write. Don't ask me to co-write. I've said this before. Do not ask me to co-write anything. I will absolutely say no, because that is torture. So... Yeah, one of the one of the things here is I do have to wonder. Okay, I don't know. I I think I I don't really know Mark Wade at all. Well, we'll say that I don't know Mark Wade at all. I'm not going to pretend to know anything, <laughs> other than what what you have all seen. I think that he genuinely believes that he's uh, fighting for social equality and all. I I think that he's genuinely an idealist. And he thinks that that's the way the world works. The problem is he has terrible social skills and he's, uh, you know, he's shown us that several times. And he also has authoritarian tendencies, which really stand out. 
So Mark Wade said here, the opportunity excites him to no end. That's what he said. I've uh, I've seen what Humanoids is about to unleash, and it's unlike anything else I've ever seen in the industry. I had to be part of it. And what are they talking about? Well, it's it, it, from what I gathered from watching both uh, Kwanzaa's interview and from reading a little bit about it, all this is going to be is what if students had a school shooting at their school and uh, you know they survived through it and then they got superpowers somehow? What would they do to change things socially? Not just socially. What would they do to change society? Every time I hear somebody say change society, it, it's creepy. Think about that for a minute. Somebody wants to change society and build it into their own fantasy. I, I hate this kind of thing. Um, that's just not how you can't just change tons of people so that they all think and feel in one way. So I, I fear that this is going to be the rise of the SJWs because those are the exact people that are always wanting to change society to their will. Okay. So also Kwanzaa said that this, this story specifically that they're working on would deal with ground level consequences like you know, when buildings are destroyed in a, in a fight between superheroes, what that really means for people on the ground, it's actually a really big deal. You, you know, things are permanent. Okay. You know, that's, that's a, that's a, I don't know. It's, it's not even that unique of an idea. I've heard lots of people say it, it does get addressed in some superhero films and comics. Not always for sure. It gets ignored, but that's kind of the fun about destroying buildings in mass is that, uh, you know, the next issue, the next episode, you can just move on and it, you know, it, it can be fun. So that's okay. You want to explore those kinds of things. I have a feeling this is going to be less about superheroes and more about social justice. Uh, tell me I'm wrong. <laughs> look at, look at the lineup of writers and artists that they have and that, and their explanation of what it is that they're trying to do. And I would, uh, you know, that's, that's really the only conclusion that I'm to come t- to come to. Now, the other question I have for Mark Wade is why would you be starting something like this when you work for Marvel? When you have risen to the heights of success that Mark Wade has in comics, why would you start a separate kind of thing with Kwanzaa of all people? And I'll go back to, I don't believe this is about making money. I mean, you can look at the titles here. I don't believe it does. This is something ideologically that people have wanted to. Uh, to to do from an ideological standpoint and now they're making that ideological fever dream a reality and that's fine because you know these are all their own characters this is all new intellectual property and i know exactly what i'm to expect if i read any of these books and i can tell you i will not be reading any of these books so (laughs) i guess that that puts mystery to rest but um this does not go against my principles it annoys me every time I hear Mark Wade's name. Uh, it annoys me every time I hear him speak. Having said that, I don't really care. None of this matters. It has absolutely no consequence in the big, in the, in the big long run. And in fact, I hope that more ideologically driven uh, comic creators do the same thing. I hope that they all work for this company uh, and they publish their monthly books to their small, small audience. And I hope they all enjoy it because that means that Marvel comics and DC comics are going to be free from the more extreme people and they can continue doing their thing. One more update. This has nothing to do with Kwanzaa. I would like to hear what your thoughts are about that. Uh, but you'll, you'll know that I've had this YouTube channel for quite a while and uh, I've been working really hard at it and have not been monetized, even though I've met all of the criteria that YouTube has asked me to have in order to be monetized. I have uh, duplicated it or or far beyond that. And so I complained on Twitter and said, YouTube over four months of waiting for approval on monetization. That's not four months since I started the channel. That's four months since I passed the requirements and jumped through their hoops and submitted for approval. They said it would take six weeks and it's now been four months. I posted that on Twitter and I am shocked and astounded to see that they actually sent me a response and they said they're going to be looking into it. They asked for my screenshot. Here it is. I have met all of their terms. And in fact, uh, I've surpassed everything. They want 4,000 hours of watch time. I have 
33,000 and a half thousand hours of watch time and I have 3,131 subscribers. Thank you everybody for that when they've only asked for 1,000. So I'm really hoping that they find whatever is wrong here. At least tell me if I'm doing something wrong. Uh, but I did want to give you an update on that because this means that I can do YouTube more. This means that I'm more interested in uh, making videos for you when I actually get uh, something from them. I can I can get some ad revenue. It really helps. So thank you very much. Love to know what you think about Mark Wade. Uh, popping his head out and doing some comics elsewhere. Let me know and don't forget to check out Downcast if you haven't yet. I would love for you to back it. Thank you very much and I'll talk to you later.